episode of Prehistore Companions. I'm Dylan, I'm a fifth grade science teacher and a reptile keeper and an artist and today I wanted to share with you guys a cool science experiment that we recently did here in my classroom. Here to start off the year, we've been talking about matter and its properties. Solids, liquids, gases. And I have a really fun learning lab that involves trying to uh, see what all this invisible gas is. That it is something, it's not just nothing. So in today's learning lab, it's called helicopter. We're going to construct paper helicopters and we're going to start with really small wings. And and I want to see how the bigger the wings get if the air uh, plays a role in how fast our paper helicopter will fall down to the ground. I have my lesson objectives here. We will see how the wing size affects the descent time of a paper helicopter. And then the students will record data and represent that data on a one quadrant graph. This is my graph here. Once we have collected all of our data, we are going to represent our average descent times on our one quadrant graph. I'll talk about what the x-axis is, what the y-axis is, what a dependent variable and an independent variable is. Here we have the scientific method. There is a series of steps that we must follow to conduct real science. First, we must ask an important question and then make some observations initially. In this case, does wing size affect how quickly our paper helicopter will fall to the ground? So we could test that and make some observations, kind of just generalize some like, what are we observing? We're using our senses to make observations. So then we're going to form a hypothesis or a claim. I claim that the bigger my wings are, the slower it will fall down to the ground. Or maybe the bigger wings will make it fall faster to the ground. Who knows? We got to do the science and figure it out. So then we must design our experiment here momentarily. I'll show you what our learning lab looks like as well as some of the information that I have up on my board. Once we've designed our experiment, collected some data, we can analyze that data, see what the heck is going on. And then finally, we can draw conclusions. Does the evidence and the data we collect support our hypothesis or our claim? Here I have dimensions for our paper helicopter. I want the helicopter to be about four and a half inches in length, two and a half, well, two inches in width. We're gonna have wing one, wing two, wing three, wing four, and each wing I want to be three quarters of an inch long. I need a little section after our wings because the dotted line here, you cut down the middle and we're gonna fold one wing this side and then fold the wing the other side so we have kind of nice propellers, a nice little helicopter. We're gonna test wing size one three times and then after we've collected our data from that, we can cut down to wing size two and then we'll test wing size two three times. The most important thing for this experiment is that each wing, every time we cut down to a new length, that the size of the helicopter wings increase the same exact size each time. Wing one is one and a half inches, and then wing two is half an inch. I think we won't get very consistent uh, results. So our wing sizes, this is what you call your constant. We can control this. Then we have this little section down here at the bottom on both sides of my helicopter. I want this space to be half an inch, one inch down, one inch across, one inch up. And then this space here, half an inch. Half an inch plus one inch plus half an inch gives me my two inches. So this gives students an opportunity to experiment with a ruler and look at what all these different lines mean and get really precise measurements. It teaches them to pay attention to detail. Okay, so here I have a paper helicopter. You can see that we have wing size one cut out and one wing is flapped one direction and the other is the other direction. On this little part here, I need a paper clip because I need something to weigh its center of gravity down. If I don't have a paper clip, then it kind of just flutters around like a leaf. Like it does, it's not so graceful. When I add the paper clip and add a little bit of weight to it, it should fall more straight down. Yeah, it fell a little more straight down. Okay, and here is our learning lab worksheet. We have a little data collection table here. We will see how the wing size, wing length, affects the descent time of a paper helicopter, and I will write and record data and represent that data on a one quadrant graph. They have another diagram of what the helicopter is supposed to look like. So before I have students do anything, we're gonna write a claim. A claim is what you think is going to happen in a scientific experiment or an outcome. In this case, my claim is I predict that the bigger the wings are in my paper helicopter, uh, technically it should fall slower to the ground because there's more air resistance underneath the wings. So once we've collected all of our data, 
We're going to see if the data supports our claim. We're going to write about it in evidence. And then we'll further explain our reasoning why the data shows that, hey, this is what's happening. This supports my claim. Uh, I was correct or I was incorrect. So I claimed that the bigger my wings get, the slower it will fall to the ground. So here we have propeller or wing length one, two, three, four. Like I said, we're gonna test wing length one, two, three, and four, three times. Trial one, trial two, trial three. And then we're gonna add these numbers together. You can see I've already collected some data. My first trial, it only took 0.55 seconds. The next one only took 0.67 seconds. And then third trial was 0.060 seconds. I'm gonna add these together and divide by three because we have three different tests. And then that'll get me my average descent time. So I'll use some space up here to start doing my math. 0 0.55 plus 0 0.67 plus 0 0.60. Add that up. 5 plus 7 plus 0, that gives me 12. 6 plus 6 plus 5 gives me 17, plus 1 is 18. So I might 8 here, carry my 1. 0 plus 0 plus 0 is obviously 0, plus 1 gives me 1. Then I'm just going to drop down the decimal. So altogether, it's about 1.82 seconds. Now I'm going to set up some long division. Okay, so now I have some long division. I'm going to take 1.82 seconds divided by 3. 3 can't go into 1. 1 is too small of a guy. But 3 can go into 18 perfectly 6 times. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 and 18 cancel each other out. You subtract there. 3 can't go into 0, so I'm going to have to borrow from this guy right here. Bring your 2 down. We haven't worked with that number yet. So I still have a problem. 3 can't go into 2. So I'm going to put a 0 up here. Then I can put another 0 right here to turn that 2 into a 20. 3 can go into 20... Six times because uh, three times seven is 21 and that's too big. 20 minus 18 gives me a remainder of two. And this equation from the direction that it's going, it's just gonna keep going on and on and on. It won't be a perfect equation. So at this point, I'm just gonna say, bring up my decimal because my decimal's right here, just bring it up. So my average descent time is 0.60 seconds here. So your average time will be between your lowest number and your highest number. Your average will always be between your lowest and highest number. All right, it's day two of this experiment. Obviously, I look different. I feel ridiculous. Today was spirit day at school. It was uh, dressed as a cartoon character, and I tried my best to do uh, Super Saiyan Goku, but my hair... I ran out of hairspray. The things I do for these kids. We're going to start with our trials. I have my helicopter. I have my ruler. I have a pencil, I have my data chart, I have a stopwatch, so let's start collecting data. Now I want to make sure the wings on my helicopter, one wing is going this way and one wing is going that way, helicopter. I want the base or the bottom of my helicopter right at 36 inches, so right about there, and I'm going to use the stopwatch on my phone. A little countdown, three, two, one, go, stop. So as soon as it hits the floor, you want to hit the stop. I got 0 0.69 seconds for this first trial. Reset, trial two, and three, two, one, go, stop. 0.70 seconds. And trial three, three, two, one, go, stop. 0 0.71. Okay, so now I want to calculate my average. I'm going to take my three trials, I'm going to add those numbers together, and then divide by three because we did three tests. So now that I've tested my first wing size, now I'm going to cut down to wing size 2, make my propellers a little bit bigger, and then repeat those steps. I'm going to test the wing size 2 three times, add them up together, calculate my average, and I'm going to do that until I get down to wing size 4, and that's my biggest wing sizes. I claim my prediction or hypothesis is that the bigger the wings are, the slower the helicopter will fall because the bigger the wings means more air resistance is under the wings and it should fall f slower to the ground. All right, and it's another new day. Today is Friday. Today was spirit day. I start filming, I swear, I start filming, and then I got kids banging on my door needing to come back to class, and then I need to stop doing what I'm doing and start filming again the next day. Ideally, this project should take about three days to complete. 
at least with fifth graders and elementary kids because you got to teach them how to measure things with a ruler and then you got to really break down if you expect it you have to teach it so with these kids you really got to break every little thing down so we already got our wing size one and all of our trial data and our first average descent time so now let's run some time lapse footage and get through the rest of these trials wing size two three and four Since this is an animal channel, let's take a quick break and let's take a look at what I got here. One of my students recently found a puddle with some tadpoles and we got some little tadpoles swimming around in here. We got a big chunky one up here. I think this one has been eating its siblings. So I need to separate them, but yeah, pretty cool. Uh, got a little basil plant with some foam. It's just sitting in there and the tadpoles are eating off of that. The, I don't know what they're eating, but I even put some banana peel in there. I'm not sure if this is what they eat. I should do some more research, but I mean, they are growing. This guy like literally was the size of some of these other small ones in here, like that tiny one. And this guy has just gotten super huge. So I don't have any actual animals here in the classroom this year, but I do have some roaches, some Madagascar hissing roaches, some isopods, Porcelia lavis, and powdered orange, and I'll be getting some different kinds of bugs because part of the fifth grade science curriculum talks about energy transfer and ecosystems and life cycles of animals. This big male Madagascar hisser there. Some Porcelia lavis, dairy cow isopods, these guys are doing good. And then we got some powdered orange isopods. I have a pinky that my snakes didn't eat, so I figure why not give it to the isopods. So there's some nice powdered orange. These guys have actually been reproducing. So we finished collecting all of our data. We have four different wing sizes, one, two, three, four, each increased three quarters of an inch each time. We tested each wing size three trials. And then we add up the trials and divide by three to get our average descent time. So my first wing size, I got 0.70 seconds. Wing size two, 0.60 seconds, which is weird. I would have thought that number would increase since the wings got bigger. I would have suspect or predicted that maybe that'd be like 0.75 or bigger maybe. So something weird happened here. Not sure what it is. Some external force was acting on my helicopter. But then here we go. We start getting back in the right direction. Wing size three, my average descent time was about 0.76 seconds. And then my biggest wing length, my uh, descent time was just shy 0.19. Uh, seconds from one whole second 0.81 seconds and always important to put the standard unit that you're working with and we're not working with hours or minutes or any other unit of time we're working with seconds so s for seconds okay so i have all of my data we're ready to go to the back side we'll look at our claim and we'll start setting up our graph plotting our coordinates on our graph and fill out all the other areas so here's our graph i want to set this up in a way that utilizes the entire graph Starting here is zero. This is what you call a one quadrant graph going from left to right or the horizontal. This is what you call an X axis going up and down or vertical. This is what we call the Y axis. So my X axis, I want this to be wing size. This is our variable. We can uh, manipulate this. My Y axis, I want to be time in seconds. Okay, so there's 12 squares around here. I have four wing sizes, so maybe I'll skip every three squares. So one, two, three, wing size one, one, two, three, wing size two, one, two, three, wing size three, one, two, three, wing size four. And then for time, we don't really get that far in terms of seconds, maybe up to two seconds, three seconds. So I'm gonna label this zero seconds all the way up to three seconds, maybe. So maybe I'll skip every two, so zero, 0.5 seconds, skip two, one second, skip two, 1.5 seconds, skip two, two seconds, 2.5, three. So my wing size is what you call an independent variable. And then my time is the dependent variable because the time depends on my wing size. Okay, so before I plot any coordinates, does my evidence support my claim? I claim that the bigger my wings are, the slower it will fall down to the ground. Well, if I look over at my data, does my evidence support that claim? And so far, just by looking at the numbers, it does because wing size one, my smallest wing, has one of the slower times, not the slowest, that goes to wing size two. 
very weird. I don't know what happened there. So, but 70 seconds, and it does increase. So 70 seconds, 60 seconds, it got it sped up there, but then it slowed down back again. Wing size 3.76 seconds, wing size 4. So my first coordinate, I'm going to uh, find wing size 1 and 0.70 seconds. So here's my wing size 1. You kind of have to do some guesstimation here. If it makes it easier to put a bunch of lines here so you know like where to more accurately place your first dot. So like this 0.5 represents half a second or 0.50. So you could technically draw 50 tiny little lines all the way up to there. That's kind of overkill. So you can kind of just use some uh, guesstimation. Use your imagination. So wing size 1 is 0.70 seconds. So 0.70, 70 is more than half but not quite 1. So I'm going to guess it's going to be somewhere maybe right below this line. So I'm going to find where they intersect. Here's my wing size 1. And maybe about 0.70 I think is maybe right about there. It's very important to make sure that your coordinates line up where they intersect. So I'm going to label this 0 0.70 seconds. Okay, wing size 2. 0.60. So again, I'm going to find where they intersect. So 0.60 is more than half, but not more than one whole second. So and it's less than this. So I'm going to go maybe a little bit below there and then just a little bit lower, just like that. 0.6. There we go. Wing size 3, 0.76. So here's my wing size 3. And 0.76 is going to be bigger than 0.70, so maybe a little taller. I'm going to say that maybe this line represents 75. So I'm going to go maybe just a little above that line. There we go. And label that 0.71 seconds. And then wing size 4, 0.81 seconds. Okay, and it's going to be a little taller than that line. So maybe I'm going to guess it's maybe like right about there. 0.81 seconds. Then connect your dots. Boom. 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 So now this just gives us a more of a visual representation about what our data is telling us or what's happening with our data and all of our trials. So initially it sped up, but then it started to slow down again. So definitely my data supports my claim. I can write about that in my evidence and for my reasoning, I could show by looking at my graph that initially it sped up, but then as my wings got bigger, the time increased. So that's my reasoning. According to the information shown on my graph that my helicopter is the wing sizes got bigger, so did in the time it took for it to fall down to the ground. So then you just explain this in that area down below. Well, that's about wrap for today's helicopter learning lab. I know it's a lot different from my usual content, but nonetheless, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you thought about today's scientific experiment. I'll probably post a couple more videos like this. We got some more learning labs or if we're doing cool science experiments and things in here, I'd love to share them with you guys. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. My name is Dylan Schultz. You're watching Prehistoric Companions. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and the subscribe if you're new to the channel. Be safe out there in this crazy world of ours and I will see you in the next one.